Hey everybody, Amtrak Guy365 here, and today on this edition of Engines of Amtrak, I will be talking about the Bud Metroliner. During the mid to late 1960s, travel by rail was becoming more and more unpopular in the United States. The American railroad system as a whole was falling behind its counterparts in Europe and Asia. In 1965, the US Congress enacted the High Speed Ground Transportation Act. This act would be an attempt at speeding up the growth of high-speed rail service in the United States following their creation of the Shikansen, or bullet train, in Japan. President Lyndon Johnson signed the act into law on September 30, 1965 under his Great Society Infrastructure Rebuilding Program. That same year, the Pennsylvania Railroad United States Department of Transportation and a private firm began discussing the specifications for an electric multiple-unit high-speed passenger train, or EMU for short. There is an EMU set that had been around since the 1950s, but proved bouncy due to its light weight of 53,000 pounds and minimal passenger comfort. This EMU was known as the Pioneer 3, but would later help in the development of the Metroliner. The PRR and DOT weren't able to agree easily on the specifications, however. The PRR wanted EMUs with a top speed of 125 miles an hour, while the DOT wanted 150 to 160 miles an hour to beat the then top speed of 130 miles an hour by the Shinkansen. Eventually, the higher speed was chosen for the design. Another debate was the PRR wanted cars with cabs on both ends for the convenience of crews, but the DOT wanted EMUs with four cars. As a compromise, two car Metroliner sets were selected. The Johnson administration viewed the EMU project as political capital and placed the project on a tight schedule. In a sense, the government forced the Metroliner sets into service, not the railroad. On May 9, 1966, the High Speed Ground Transportation Project ordered 50 cars from the Bud Company and were delivered in September of 1967 at a cost of $10.4 million from the PRR and $9.6 million from the federal government. The order contained 20 coach cars, 20 snack bar cars, and 10 parlor cars. In August 1966, the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority, better known as SEPTA, bought 11 more cars for regional service between Philadelphia and Harrisburg. In 1967, four Silver Liners, a variant of the Pioneer 3, were ordered by the U.S. Department of Transportation and were modified for high-speed operations on the PRR's Northeast Corridor. A series of test runs eventually revealed a top speed of 156 miles an hour, and after April 2, 1967, Metroliner testing could begin. In September 1967, the first Metroliners were delivered for testing at Jenkintown Station in a Philadelphia suburb. The PRR immediately began testing on the Redding's West Trenton line. However, multiple failures with the Westinghouse Propulsion System, or traction motors, at 70 miles an hour made PRR executives delay the start of Metroliner service from September 20, 1967 to January 1, 1968. During that time in November, the PRR tested two cars on their main line and the cars reached a speed of 125 miles an hour, while other cars reached 164 miles an hour at Princeton Junction in New Jersey. Even though speed tests were successful, tests proved the Metroliners would not be allowed to operate at such speeds in revenue service. One flaw with the Metroliner was seen on December 17th of 1967 during a test of Metroliners passing by MP54 rail cars. Metroliners passing by caused the windows in the MP54s to be ripped out due to a pressure drop between the two trains. The panographs on the Metroliners also tended to bounce on the cantonary wires and draw an unsuitably high currents due to the low capacity transformer. There is also an echoing problem during tests as well. A few months later on February 1, 1968, the Pennsylvania Railroad was merged with the New York Central and New Haven Railroads to form Penn Central. The remaining order of Metroliners that featured General Electric traction motors were shipped with Penn Central logos while those in service retained the PRR paint scheme. The GE Metroliners had an improved panograph design, but service entry was indefinitely delayed on March 12, 1968 due to an electrical arcing issue because of poor electrical insulation. In October, more tests were conducted and eventually proved the Metroliners and their viability with a three-hour schedule. On December 20th of 1968, Penn Central announced the Metroliner service would begin on January 16th of 1969. On February 5th, an 8-car Metroliner service was tested but caused cantonary outages and proved 6 cars to be the limit. The Westinghouse-powered Metroliners didn't enter service until mid-1969 due to many mechanical and electrical issues. 
Officially, the Metroliner was rated for a top speed of 150 miles an hour, weighed in at 166,000 pounds, output 1200 horsepower, and used Westinghouse or General Electric traction motors under direct current. Metroliners featured shrilling horns such as the Leslie S55s and S37s. Here are a few samples. <laughs> As the Metroliners entered service, a two and a half hour non-stop round trip was created, but the existing problems with the Metroliners were still present. Due to track condition, the Federal Railroad Administration restricted Metroliners from going any faster than 120 miles an hour. At the time, the Metroliners were the fastest trains in North America. On February 25, 1970, 11 Westinghouse-powered Metroliners intended for Harrisburg service completed their testing, but Penn Central refused to accept the cars noting their technical issues and how they were not suitable for the Harrisburg service. The Westinghouse-powered Metroliner's acceleration was lackluster, they tended to overheat and struggled to climb the grade near Suburban Station in Philadelphia. Eventually, Penn Central decided to lease the problematic sets for New York to New Washington service but returned them to the Bud Company's plant for improvement in April. At a service rates for the Westinghouse Metroliners reached over 40% and the New Jersey Department of Transportation devoted $5 million to the Metroliner Improvement Project to expedite the progress. With the creation of Amtrak on May 1, 1971, Amtrak was responsible for taking over nearly all inner city passenger services in the United States. Amtrak enacted 12 daily round-trip Metroliner services in November 1971 and also retained the 100 mile an hour speed limit. Amtrak invested heavily in Metroliner advertisements, stating that they had all the amenities of an airplane such as speed and comfort. There are often two ways to take a business trip. More and more smart executives are going places on an Amtrak train. They make good use of their travel time and arrive right downtown relaxed and refreshed. Try Amtrak and you'll discover the best way to get better mileage out of a business trip is to leave your car at home and take the train. America is getting into training, training the Amtrak way. After two years of Amtrak service, half of all the passengers on the Metroliner were people who switched from air travel and road travel, seeing the Metroliner as a much more convenient way of travel. Despite the major profitability of the Metroliner service, Amtrak briefly considered in 1972 replacing the EMU sets with traditional locomotive power. However, with the Metroliners being the only new piece of equipment Amtrak had at the time, they dropped the idea in favor of looking for ways to remove any existing problems with the Metroliners. One GE-powered Metroliner was sent to Erie, Pennsylvania for an experimental rebuild and if successful, all cars would be rebuilt by 1976. The rebuilt Metroliner was returned to Amtrak in November 1973 with improvements including relocation of the dynamic brake resistors and air intakes to a small notable hump on the top of the cars. This reduced overheating and snow intake. The rebuilt cars had a top speed of 130 miles an hour and two other cars were rebuilt by February 1974. The rebuilding program was an overall success with the exception of rough riding on tracks with little maintenance. The rebuilds cost $500,000 per car which was $50,000 more than a single car purchase. Amtrak looked to repair unmodified Metroliner sets that had clocked in over 11 million miles but not many were actually repaired. Out-of-service Metroliner rates were at 27.5% and most trains ran with less cars than what was demanded. This led Amtrak to cut Metroliner services from 15 to 13 in February 1976 while cars were being serviced. In August of the same year, the SPV-2000 was revealed intending to be the successor of the Metroliner, but due to it being mechanically unreliable, it never came to be. Later in 1976, Amtrak tested the Swedish RC4 to replace aging GG1s with Amfleets and was able to meet a Metroliner timetable. Amtrak considered purchasing 118 additional cars with the name of Metroliner 2, but the order was reduced to 50 cars until the order was cut altogether. In early 1977, Amtrak had finally began repainting their Metroliners into the Phase 1 paint scheme. By January 1978, Amtrak trains with conventional locomotive power proved to have a better on-time performance than the Metroliners. In March 1978, Amtrak sent some Metroliner sets to GE for a complete overhaul and in their place, 
Three gear GG1s took their place topping out at 110 miles an hour. Schedules were lengthened from 2.5 hours to 3.2 hours due to the GG1's slightly slower speed. Rebuilt Metroliners returned to service starting May 17, 1979, but their more reliable AEM-7 was starting to make its mark. AEM-7s were able to meet Metroliner timetables and because of this, Metroliner sets began to be withdrawn from service. The last run of a non-rebuilt Metroliner set was on April 1, 1981, while the last train to use Metroliner sets was on October 23, 1981. By this time, the Metroliners had become so unreliable, it wasn't uncommon to see a Metroliner train being towed by a conventional locomotive. AEM-7s began pulling Metroliner coach cars by the mid-1980s until Amfleets replaced the Metroliner cars. In the late 1980s, Amtrak had a large surplus of problematic Metroliner sets. Amtrak converted 23 of 31 sets into Amfleet-styled cab cars for push-pull service. With the cancellation of the Atlantic City Express in 1995, the Metroliner-based cab cars were not needed as much on the Northeast Corridor and were relocated to service on the Vermonter. With General Electric's P40s becoming the predominant power on the Vermonter, some cab cars returned to the Northeast Corridor for the new re-electrified Keystone service and later the New Haven to Springfield shuttle service. The last Amtrak Metroliner service ran on October 27, 2006. Between 2003 and 2011, the majority of the Metroliner sets were scrapped in Delaware. Metroliner snack bar car number 860 is currently preserved at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania, retaining its original PRR paint. While the Metroliners don't look exactly as they once did and had an unpredictable future, some still roam the rails as cab cars and always be a part of the history book of Amtrak, the National Railroad Passenger Corporation. Thanks for watching. Thank you to all the following people and sources for providing information, photos, and videos for the production of this video. I will be progressing further into the history of Amtrak's mode of power next time when I discuss the General Electric P30CH. Stay tuned and thank you again for watching.